Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! And for the 65th time from the beautiful Paradise Studios in Massapequa, Long Island, it's In the Cage with Cyclone, and I, of course, am Cyclone. Wow, 65 times. Hey, guys, um, question for you really fast. Um, you think it, like, show 75 or 100... Because it's like big numbers. I could get like a prize or something. Thank you. I heard that. I'm like Hetty fr from NCIS. I hear you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, I'm an easy person to, to give gifts to. I, I, I'm an easy whore. I will take anything. Um, boy, you can see I'm still wearing my glasses. I'm not going to gore you with all the disgusting details, but now not just is the left eye messed up, now the right one is too. But I still see you guys right now watching, so please click share. It's that simple. Um, the weather. Ah, oh, the weather finally. The heat has busted. No more heat. Gone. Bye bye As David Spade used to say on Saturday Night Live. Oh, it was so cool. So beautiful this morning. Um, wow. But, you know, my eyes, I do have to say this. Kind of messed up my plans. Canceled me out for going... And I care for you too, Frankie Love. So much. Um, and I'll tell you, it, it messed me up from seeing Bellator. Because I wasn't feeling too safe driving all the way to Bridgeport. The boogie down part of Connecticut. Um, but I stayed local. And I did something I haven't done in a long, long time. Went out, supported local indie wrestling, Warriors of Wrestling, headed to Brooklyn. So I supported my man Joey Bellini and his organization, which, by the way, he runs tirelessly. The guy is like, like a little... I don't know, Joe, if you're watching right now. Frankie, maybe you want to let him know that I'm about to say something about him. But... Joe, during a card, is a true promoter, okay? He's not sitting back, relaxing somewhere. He is running around like a little chipmunk. And I don't say little chipmunk because he's tiny, but it is what it is, as Max Holloway would say. Anyways, guys, we have seriously so much to get to. Thank you, Frankie. Now, of course, Joe is going to get all pissed at me calling him a chipmunk. Um... But, eh, what's he going to do? I'll sit on him. Uh, we have so much to get to. We're going to start off with wrestling. Um, got boxing news, and obviously we're going to break down. You know, the Bagel Boss guy is also now doing stem. I want to I want to kick the Bagel Boss's ass. How about that? Okay, I don't know if Joel signed me versus him in the ring. Um... Maybe SWF. Maybe we'll rebook like Five Burrow. I want that guy in the ring. Um, 
So, anyways, guys, click share, like I said. Check out CycloneComedy.com. And most importantly, what you need to do is check out Effective Aggression. Help fight cancer. Do yourself a favor and make a purchase. Um, and we're going to kick this whole party off. How, how? Right after this. This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Bosch. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Got MMA legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Chuck it up. And if you got the guts, step in the cage with Cyclone. Hello, Donald Chandler. See, you didn't think I could see you watching, but Don, click share. Welcome aboard. Welcome to In the Cage. Um, so, like I said, let's start with what I did supporting Warriors of Wrestling. And I'll tell you what. Joe Bellini was in a tough position being the, the head honcho of Warriors. Um, you can't stop someone who's climbing the ladder to success you just can't do it you, you can't do it because it's not the right thing to do and quite frankly you can't you, you just can't because you're not going to stop someone from improving so sunny kiss who is a longtime indie wrestler lots of organizations in, including Warriors of Wrestling, who is a phenom, okay, and I am fingers, arms, toes, eyes, everything's all crossed, hopefully, we'll get Mr. Kiss right here, um, if you could do that, if you could pull that off, Frankie Love, that would be awesome, because I can't find any AEW contacts, anyways, so here's the deal. Sonny signed to AEW. Sonny has to drop the heavyweight Warriors of Wrestling Championship. And the one good thing for Joe is there is a smooth transition here. Going from a Sonny Kiss, a, a great baby face in indie wrestling, to arguably one of the best heels... Not just in indie wrestling, but I say in pro wrestling too. I put, as far as a heel goes, Darius Carter up against them all. Anyone in the WWE. Hell, anyone in AEW. Anyone in Impact. Anyone in anywhere. I can't stop crossing my eyes, Rudy. I'm going blind. Um... Anyways, so there's that good transition there where it stings losing a great talent like Sonny Kiss, but when you have a Darius Carter right there, you know, it's kind of like going from, I don't know, Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. You know, it's in, the company's in good hands. And as a matter of fact, not that I'm a, a wrestling script writer, that, 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 that I do good storylines. And Frankie Love, I especially want you to keen your ears on, on this. And let Joey know that I think that this might be a good idea. I'm just throwing it out there. 
you know, I'm, I'm putting it out into the world. Maybe it happens. Maybe it don't. I don't know. Look, obviously, for a very, very long time, Darius Carter has been part of the Hostile Collective. Here's the thing. I wonder if the Hostile Collective storyline is starting to be the beginning of the end, kind of die out. I don't, I don't know. I just, I think so. I, I feel that it, it, it now can be, you know, segued out, if you will. And I think there's a perfect home for Darius Carter. Team prolific. Him with Isaiah Wolf and the rest of the guys. No, Rudy, a lot of people now that I've said it, everybody watching, everybody sharing, hopefully if you share it, Rudy, so people like Hulser can watch and Jorge and the rest of your friends that I don't like, this way they will all know. They will learn. Because Darius Carter, is, Darius Carter can, can, can be the final piece to the puzzle of prolific. I really, I, I, it's just my hunch, you know, I, I think so. I think it would fit. I think the puzzle pieces would mesh quite well. Um, but yeah, I do. Thank you. Is it No, I think he's a little bit higher up. I, I, I think Darius is, look, he stays in kayfabe. That's what makes him awesome. He'll, he doesn't like you, and he's not out five minutes later high-fiving you and chatting with you. He don't like you before, during, and after. And that, that, that's what you want out of a heel. You don't want to heal, you know, before and after. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Then during, hey, how you doing? I like you. We're best buddies. You don't want that in wrestling on any level. You, you want guys in kayfabe. I think so. And that's why, that's why I think, and I, I know Neff has, you know, the old hostile collective connection, but I, I really think him and, and, you know, Isaiah and the guys are prolific and Darius, you know, kind, kind of could be like, Warriors version of like the Nation of Domination. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, so let me just do this. Now, sticking with wrestling, but moving slightly, I've done some research for you guys. Cain Velasquez has it in his UFC contract that he is allowed to wrestle. And he actually has two more times in uh, Lucha Libre Triple A. Yeah, that's exactly the reason, Frankie. Not not to sound you know like a southerner, but it it would work. And and and, and th 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 their their auras would all mesh. I'm telling you, it would. Uh. But anyways, like I was saying, Cain Velasquez, two more times will be fighting for Lucha Libre, AAA, one of which will be at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. So Rudy Asher, open up your ears. Uh, I plan on seeing Mr. Velasquez that weekend. If you want to tag along, you can. Um... But there's a lot of interest coming from other organizations since he only has two more fights in Lucha Libre AAA. He's getting interest from AEW. He is getting, he is actually talking. He had meetings already with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And obviously, where those are involved and they're interested in those guys, obviously, the, the big dog. McMahon is obviously going to be interested and I've talked about this before I've written about it in articles 
would Vince ever consider Kane versus Brock 2? Obviously, Kane kicked the bejesus out of Brock in, in the UFC. Brock doesn't obviously like losing too much. I wonder if he would put over Kane in the WWE. I don't think so. I think Kane, I think Brock's ego is just too big. Uh, you don't need a ticket. You just need to stand outside the hotel. Um, but it would be, like I said, it, it would be very, very interesting to see where Kane winds up. And if he does sign with a, a New Japan Pro or an AEW or even a WWE, what's the crossover because he still has fights under contract to the UFC? So it would be very, very interesting to see how he handles the two sports going forward. Uh, similar, similarly, I don't know, Frankie, it might. Um, Leonard Ellaby and Floyd Mayweather have now opened up their mouths. They have said that Javante Tank Davis will... In the words of uh, Chris Jericho, in my Chris Jericho voice, never, never, ever fight on the zone. They will not allow it. I don't, I don't. This is where I said what, what makes Joey Bellini special. He doesn't stop anybody from going forward. If the best fight for Javante Tank Davis is Tevin Farmer, which it is at this point at this point in time, today, August 26th. That's the best fight for Tank Davis. It needs to be on the zone. Okay? They just need to bite the bullet. They have put their foot down saying, nope, Javante's never going on to the zone. And if Tevin wants to fight, it has to be on their network, which is Showtime. And he cannot be paid more than $2 million. Tevin Farmer doesn't go to the bathroom for less than $3, 4000000 million. There is no way on God's green earth Tevin Farmer... Even if Tevin Farmer's people said, okay, go fight on Showtime. You think for one second... He's going to say, okay, I'll fight Tank Davis for less than $2 million? Really? Are you kidding me? You got a better chance of meeting Jesus and Moses together at the same time and taking a photo in between them. And that's the facts. Jack. Now, October, October I was going to say October 25th. October 5th, Triple G. Obviously, at the Garden is taking on uh, Sergey uh, Dervianchenko for Canelo for what was formerly Canelo's IBF uh, middleweight strap. Now, here's the thing: whoever wins is possibly lined up to face Canelo. Now, Canelo's already said he has no interest in fighting Triple G for a third time. It's a fight all of us boxing fans want. We all need that trilogy. It has to happen. Whether Canelo Alvarez likes it or not, it has to happen. It's that simple. It really needs to happen. Okay, um... Now, if Sergey wins, that's new blood. I would imagine Canelo Alvarez would jump on that for the opportunity to get what was his back and to fight fresh blood. I would, I would think so. And I would give him a distinct advantage over Sergey. Uh, now, another possibility for Canelo Alvarez... 
this whole fight that just went down this weekend between Anthony Yarde, who, look, let, let's give the kid credit. He was in over his head. Sergey, <laughs> excuse me, excuse moi. Sergey Yarde fought over his head this past weekend. He was outclassed, outmatched, but multiple times, especially in the eighth round, he stung Sergey Kovalev. He scared Sergey Kovalev. He hurt Sergey Kovalev, especially to the body. Okay, in the eighth round, he was ripping Sergey to the body. Sergey was backpedaling. Was Sergey Kovalev ever in danger of being finished? No, I don't think so. But he had the fear of God put into him. For a couple of minutes. That I can guarantee you. And when I guarantee something, take it to the bank. Now look, Sergey Kovalev is 36. You could see him starting the slowdown process because, as we know in athletics, goes up. And once you hit that plateau, goes down. You can see the downward start. To Sergey Kovalev. Does he wind up ever fighting Canelo Alvarez? I think Canelo would piece him up. As good as Sergey Kovalev was and is, maybe five, six years ago, I, I go the other way. But right now, no. Nah. Uh uh-uh. uh. I honest to God say, and, and this is someone who hates Canelo Alvarez. Every possible fight for Canelo Alvarez out there, I actually prefer Canelo Alvarez to win. And it kills me to say that. Um. But. I will say one last thing about Sergey Kovalev. He's still able to snap off some good jabs. And that's a key part of his game. And it's a part where Canelo will be hit. Canelo will get touched up. Does it mean he goes down? Probably not. But he will touch him up. So look, here's what we're going to do. We, and when I say we, I mean all of you and me, we, are all now going to click share. Because it's very important. And it will make me happy. Kind of like a dying man's last request. So please click share. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. So this way you can enter a raffle like this one and the one coming up in two weeks for UFC 242 when Poirier fights Khabib. You want to do that. You, you want to win prizes because I have so many great prizes. Okay. Ask everybody who's won. Everyone's happy with the prizes that they've won. Um, and obviously, pretty please. I'm going to say it. Effectiveaggression.com. Check it out. And when we come back, it's all MMA after this. Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Mergliata. I'm Derek Brunson. I'm Nick Carney lens and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone.
Oh, okay. So, before you guys say, hey, Cyclone, stop drinking unhealthy stuff, you can see the, the body armor. Orange mango. Those are fruits, so it's a healthy drink because it's orange and it's mango. Okay. So, we have two breaking stories right now that I don't know if you guys know about because it's breaking. Numero one, C.B. Dalloway has been pa uh, has been suspended two years by everyone's favorite group, USADA, because he has popped for multiple, multiple um, performance-enhancing banned substances. C.B. C.B., you get an F. What are you doing, buddy? That's not good. Um, and the other one is Greg Hardy is now demanding that he gets to face a ranked opponent. And here's the thing. I looked at the heavyweight rankings, and with the exception of DC Stipe and possibly Ngannou, Everyone else, and as much as I hate Canelo Alvarez, I hate Greg Hardy 18 bazillion times more than that. I looked at him and I was like, who would be a good opponent for Greg Hardy to face since he wants a ranked opponent? Maybe, maybe put him in with someone that's ranked and let him get smacked around a bit. Okay, let this be his karma for his past mistakes. And I'm thinking maybe someone low ranked in the top 15, like a Moss and Turbo. But I can see Greg Hardy beating him. Um, I don't know, maybe like a Tai Tuavasa. But Tai Tuavasa makes a lot of mistakes. Tai can get clipped. And put out by Greg Hardy. So then you start thinking mid rank guys. And, and does someone like Greg Hardy deserve someone like that right off the bat? Nah, not really. But you look at it and you say who and Alistair Overeem. But you don't want Overeem to remember what Nganu did to him. You don't want that to happen again. Again, you don't need Alistair Overeem's head to look like a Pez dispenser. You really don't. So, I, I, I can't figure out who, but with the exception of maybe like the top four or five guys in the rankings, I actually think Greg Hardy can beat them. Which is offensive to me. I'm hurt by that. Um, and we were talking about Kane before and, and crossover guys, much like Greg Hardy going from football to MMA. Well, Bellator has signed English rugby star James Haskell. Now, this guy is a beast. He is, if you don't know what James Haskell is like, he is a... White Francis Ngannou. He is a big, big man. And I, I only see one person in Bellator that, that would be a fair first test for him. And you don't want to ruin this person in a, so early in their career in MMA because he's a crossover. We, the people... Jake Hager. Jake Hager and, and James Haskell would be a good first fight for James. And it would be a tough one for Jake. But, you know, two big monstrous guys. You figure they're going to just throw hands. Might be fun to watch. Um, and speaking of Belto, let, let's go over 225. Because that, that's what this weekend was all about, really, in the MMA world. 
Holy smokes. Holy freaking smokes. Haley's Comet comes around more often than what we saw Bellator this weekend. As far as a major promotion is concerned, the last time a whole entire card, not one time, went to the judges' scorecards was uh, UFC Fight Night Sydney where Bisping and Rockhold fought for the first time. And they were only 11 for 11. 11 fights, 11 finishes. This, 14 fights, 14 finishes. We saw the fastest uh, submission in Bellator history. Aviv Gozali, Chaim Gozali, son. The fastest submission ever. A quick Minari roll into a heel hook. Impressive as Conor McGregor would say, Fook. That is cla- that, that, that is remarkable to start off like that and boom. Um I don't I don't know if a, a tap could f- happen faster than eleven seconds. Um so very, very happy for Chaim and obviously Aviv. Uh Nick Newell, who lives in uh, Milford, just a couple minutes away from Bridgeport, turns around in front of the home crowd, wins and then has a beautiful post-fight speech. Talk Basically, he didn't mention Dana White by name, but all the doubters, all the, you said I couldn't fight because I got one arm. You said I couldn't win. I couldn't do this. Well, once again, Nick Newell has proven he is a dangerous fighter, one arm or not. And it's basically two arm, one and a half arms. Uh, obviously, it's good. the card is not marred, but I don't know what it is with Matt Mitrione, but in Mohegan Sun... Matt kicks Sergey Karatanov in the in the in the Kajonis. This time, Matt's mouthpiece falls out four times. Now look, should Dan Mergliata have taken a point away soon or fast? I don't know. I like Dan. I like Dan Mergliata a lot. I trust his opinion on things. But, falls out the first time, falls out the second time, falls out the third time. That's when Mirigliano warns him. Falls out fourth time. And before he can actually do anything, I, I don't know what Matt was thinking coming inside at that point. But he came inside, Sergey, and Sergey crushes him with an uppercut and drops him. I don't look. Can Matt, does Matt Michion have an argument that he should have never been punched without the mouthpiece? I wonder if if him and his team will go ask for 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 a, a, a turnover or or the fight to be turned into a no contest. I truly wonder that. Speaking of Michael Kesey, Frankie Love, happy you mentioned it. Tong Po t-shirt right here. Let me put it to you like this. If you like films, arguably, you have Vader, you have Scar from The Lion King. This right here, Tong Po. Arguably the third best villain in film history. Even though Michael Kesey is actually a real badass and not a fictional character. He is a badass. And... I think he's arguably third best villain in movies. Um, anyways, so I don't know if that fight will be turned over. And, and frankly, I don't know if it should be. But it would be interesting to see if they bring up a case. Because they do have that argument. He didn't have a mouthpiece in. Why was a punch thrown? Uh Vitaly Minikov 
just wrecking Tim Johnson, who you have to feel bad for. They both wound up having to face each other literally hours before. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be a chiller, too, because it's right after Bellator, and it's a whole long story. I just don't know what day I'm going, Frankie. Um, so, Vitaly Minikov is back on a winning streak. Um, Tyrell Fortune continues his winning streak, going to 7-0. and um, I honestly think after Bader is done with his heavyweight fights against Czech Congo and then goes down a light heavyweight, I think the next heavyweight challenger should be Vitaly Minikov. And I also think you take Sergei Karatanov and you take Tyrell Fortune and you put them in the cage together and see what happens. Um, so, yeah. That's a fast wrap-up. We're going to keep this thing moving because, guys, guess what? We are at the point where it's just about game time. And that's going to happen in a few minutes. After, we're going to go do game time. After you guys click share. After you guys check out EffectiveAggression.com. And after this quick break. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gaston. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man. Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock. And you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. So let's do a top pound for pound list. We haven't done one in a while. And despite what happened a couple weeks ago, despite what's going to happen next week, I'm pretty safe to say my top 12 is what should be the official top 12 because nobody does it better than yours truly, Cyclone. Um, number 12, I think Kamara Usman slides in there really well. He's a complete fighter, even though I don't like him. Got to call things right down the middle. He has the cardio, he has the strength, he has the speed. Only thing he doesn't have is power. Um, I would love to put Paulo Costa in the top 12, but he doesn't have the cardio. Um, so, que sera, sera. Um, Number 11, I think Henry Cejudo. Triple C, whatever the hell you want to call him. I put him at number 11. Sliding at number not at number 10, rather, Jessica Andrade. She is like a little pit bull, nonstop movement, which brings me to number 9. And a lot of you guys are going to say Cyclone. Stop smoking Nate Diaz's. I don't do that. But number nine, I think, is Alexander Volkanovsky. He is so underrated. As much hype as he's getting, he's still underrated. But number nine is where I stick him. Number eight, one of the most complete fighters, man or woman alive, on this planet, regardless of organization, Valentina Shevchenko. She is a total complete package. Number seven... Bobby Knuckles, the Grim Reaper himself, Robert Whitaker. Doesn't matter if he loses to Israel Adesanya soon. He, he, he too is a complete fighter, and he, he he fits in 
right in the middle at number seven. Number six, The Blessed Era, Max Holloway. Number five, El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. As long as he has Eddie Bravo, the, 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 the evil little Yoda, whispering in his ear, there's hardly a more complete fighter and someone that has better cardio than just about everyone. You know, I put it above uh, Colby's. I put it above um, Nate's. I put it above uh, everyone else's cardio. Uh, Tony Ferguson is just vicious, except for one person whose cardio is just uh, just one hair better than his. And we'll get to that person. Um, number four is Amanda Nunes, the Linus. She is the female goat. Uh, number three is the and new heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. Number two, the person who's just a hair above Tony Ferguson, Khabib. Whether he wins or loses against Dustin, it's not going to change that much. Um, and number one, look, I don't care if he lost to DC. If DC lost to Stipe, DC right now is still, as far as I'm concerned, pound for pound number one. Worst case scenario, you flip Khabib and, and, and DC and maybe slide DC to three and Stipe at two. But one, two, three, that's those three. It's Stipe, Stipe DC, and Khabib. That's your top three. Um... Because obviously I don't put drug users like John Jones in my pound for pound. Now, as far as this thread is concerned, Ike the Bruiser, listen. I don't know. I would accept Frankie Love's challenge. And I'd fight Frankie. I like you. We're good friends. But I'd, I'd absolutely fight you, sir. But here's the deal. I have a... A surgically repaired right ankle. I'm a type 2 diabetic with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. I can't see out of either eye. I don't know if I could pass the state's physical exam. But if you could somehow fix it where I'm able to surpass and not worry about a state exam, getting licensed by the state, I'll fight you, Frankie Love. I'll fight you. I'll fight you any day of the week. Now, um, we got to move along really fast. Let's see what happened on this day in MMA history. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We got two things today. And they're both birthdays. So, You, you don't have to worry about me. Okay, I, you don't have to tell me to kick Frankie's ass. I will. Do I have to do it in Jersey, though? Because... You know what I would like to do, by the way? I, I would really like, because I've done it for MMA for two organizations. I wouldn't mind doing some wrestling broadcasting. That's something I've always wanted to do. Is... is, is be like the Bobby Heenan, you know what I mean? Or, or maybe even, you know, teased in my head a couple times being a manager. But anyways, getting back to On This Day in MMA History, is two birthdays. Ketlin Vieira is 28. And the ripe old age, former World Series of Fighting superstar, Jose, Nado, Jose Naldo Silva... Is 33. And that's what happened in this day in MMA history. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, in my road doggy dog voice, let's do everybody's favorite part of the show. I don't know why my voice cracked. The raffle. And 
what is Frankie Love's turtle's name? Ike. Um, okay, so while Ike writes that answer, we have four questions that I will answer. Number one comes from Jason Hatcher. Do you think Dana will ever have his champ fight the ch other champs of other organizations like Stipe vs. Bader? No, I really don't. Do I want it? I love cross promotion. I wish cr I wish cross promotion would be in everything. Um, cross promotion just works. Okay, that's why it needs to continue to happen. But I I think Dana's ego will just never let that happen. And it's not really just Dana. There is more to it. You know, it's the rest of the team that, that, that puts it together. You know, so it's not just him. But if someone got to Ari Emanuel and said, look, this is... I hope your leech's name isn't Brian. Frankie, you get it? Brian Leach? Never mind. Um, so, anyways. Question number two comes from Rudy Asher. The defending Facebook question raffle winner. What do you think of Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch being engaged? What do I think about them being engaged? I am pissed off about it because I love Becky Lynch. I don't know why she just won't go out with a fat, balding, broke Jew. Um, question number three comes from my dear friend, Chicago native... John James. John's question is, what is your honest opinion about fighters calling each other out publicly? Um, I actually don't like it. I think they should... I think that fighters need to keep that stuff in the back. D don't bring that, that stuff out into the open. You want to um, fight someone... Do it behind closed doors. There's no need to be, oh, I challenge you. Oh, you, you, you. No, you don't need to do it publicly. Although, I appreciate Frankie Love calling me out. Because I'm just letting you know, if I can somehow not have to take a physical, because I won't pass it, I'll fight you. There. Um... But no, John, I, 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 I'm not a fan of the Joe Rogan, the Dan Hardy, the, the uh, big John McCarthy going, okay, so who do you want to fight next? That, that's not what I'd like to do. Um, yeah, Frankie, okay, I'll fight you and the winner gets Becky Lynch. Or Sasha Banks, because quite frankly, Sasha Banks with blue hair is freaking hot. Hot. Um, and question number four comes from my good friend, Mr. Kenny Hodgkins. After McGregor's interview with Ariel Hawani, who do you think his next opponent is and when? He mentioned a lot of names. I'm not going to go down the list, but he threw out everybody's names. No, Frank, Frank, come on. Tommy will put Frankie over. That's not fair. <coughs> the only thing Tommy Dreamer won't do is come on this show because I asked him and he said he can't because he works for Sirius. Um, which actually hurt my feelings. Um, who, who should Connor fight next? Well, it depends what weight class. If you're talking about at 155, I still like that cowboy cowboy fight for him. Um, I like, and it's in Barboza for Connor. Um, if Connor wants to rematch, uh, Khabib, which he obviously does, maybe he should get Islam Makachev. But if Connor wants to go up to 170 and fight. Uh, look, the only one not matched up is Leon Edwards. Give him Leon Edwards. Give him a fight that, that was supposed to happen 
way back in the day at lightweight, RDA. You know who would be perfect for Connor at, at 170? Robbie Lawler. <coughs> Stop with Dennis. We get it. You don't like Connor. But I just gave you six great fight names for him. And then obviously, if he wins at 155, then he gets Khabib rematch. If he wins at 170, he gets the Nate trilogy. So th th there's a whole bunch of possibilities. But I do not like Frankie Edgar. That, that's a fight I do not like for him. Um, now, as Frankie Love has asked, and no, she does not look like an effing Smurf, and no, Diaz will not beat him up again, Dennis, how dare you? Um, what do we think about Ring of Honor? I actually like Ring of Honor, Ike. Although that question will not count in the raffle. You could enter next week. Enter next week. Like the page, like Psyche Prods on Facebook, and you can enter the raffle. And you can ask any question you want. <coughs> but I'm actually a fan of Ring of Honor. All right, now, as they have asked me, I will spin the wheel. And I will find a winner for this week's prize. It is number three, John James. Congratulations, sir. Your prize will be shipped out tomorrow morning. When I wake up, I will go to the post office. Now, the aforementioned Dennis Newman, who is an evil person because he likes Nate Diaz and is anti-Connor. That, that fiend, that, that vicious individual, Dennis Newman, is in the house because I can hear him giggling right now because I got, like, Jorge Posada ears on my head. And she does not look like a smurf, Frankie. She looks like my next ex-wife. Um, anyways, guys, I will be back here in 167 hours. If you bet in math, that's one week away. Ladies and gentlemen, until then, I am Cyclone saying, just because all of you out there are not athletes, especially Frankie and Ike, doesn't mean you guys can't be athletic supporters. Adios, amigos!